Now, we all know that we shouldn't place people inside boxes, right? When we place boxes around people, it can make it difficult for us to see a full, complete, nuanced, complex picture of who they are and what their abilities are. Not every box is useful. But what if there are boxes that are useful to us as teachers? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at today with our topic of proficiency levels. Proficiency levels are the different levels of English or different labels that we give to students as they progress and advance in their learning of the English language. Now we can create all sorts of boxes around these different levels and around these different types of students. But another way to visualize our students is to use what we call a continuum. And on one side of our continuum is where we would place our beginners, or it's the starting point for all language learners. And on the opposite side of the continuum is where we would place an advanced student, or someone who speaks the language proficiently. For many language teachers, this might be the goal that we would have for all of our language learners, that they would reach an advanced level of English. And the one thing we can clearly see in this picture is the long journey from beginner to advanced, and that there are many stops potentially along that journey. And this really represents the complex view that we really should have of our students that they often don't fit neatly inside one particular box or one particular level. Instead, they might fit somewhere in between some of these levels. In fact, they could be an advanced speaker, but when it comes to writing, maybe they fall back a level or two. Our students are complex and they're diverse and they're unique in their abilities. And actually a picture of a continuum is a, maybe a better way to actually visualize that complexity. However, here in TESOL, we're going to be using five different proficiency levels. And many teachers and schools will use something similar to this. In its most basic form, you're usually going to have a beginner, an intermediate student, and an advanced student. In TESOL, to add a little complexity to that, we're also introducing upper intermediate, which is a student that is between intermediate and advanced. And then we're also going to have an elementary level, which is a student that's somewhere between intermediate and beginner. Now, some schools may not use the term elementary the way that we do in TESOL. They may have a beginner one course and a beginner two course, or like an upper beginner. Or they may have a lower intermediate an intermediate and an upper intermediate, or they might place all the levels on a numbered scale of level one, two, three, four, and five. There are a lot of different ways that you can name your classes and your levels for your school. But here in TESOL, we're going to use these five terms, beginner, elementary, intermediate, upper intermediate, and advanced. Where did my box go? All right, some of you will have no problem putting your students inside boxes. This is actually really hard for me. I love seeing the world in various shades of gray. I think it's actually really good when you're working with different cultures to see the world in different shades of gray. Not black and white, not he's wrong, I'm right. No, we're just different. So I have a hard time choosing which of these boxes do I put my students in. But here's the thing, in our schools, we have classrooms. We might have a beginner class, an intermediate class, and an advanced class. So we may have English one, English two, English three, and so on. And we wanna place our students in the best classroom for them. A place where they will be challenged, but not overwhelmed. Where they will be with other students that are just like them, or that are on a similar stop along their journey. And so as teachers, we need a way of understanding and assessing all of our students' levels so we, we can place them in the best classes for them and their abilities. In this lesson, we're gonna be looking at our proficiency levels. We're gonna be talking about what are they, how do we define them, 
How can we assess our students so we know which level to place them in? And we're going to be showing you some simple tools and some simple processes that you can use in order to do that. All right. Your students are on an adventure to become better language learners, and we're on an adventure to become better language teachers. So grab your boxes, get your backpacks, and let's go learn about some proficiency levels.